All right, so pretty much done with a lot of the big stuff on here. One thing I still have to figure out yet is how I'm gonna do the heater lines, because the heater lines kinda come out straight towards the exhaust manifold, so I could do a 45 on there, or some 90s or something like that. I also did get some tools in line to do 10 AN hard lines, so I was thinking maybe I could try to do something with that, but we'll see where that goes. Not too worried about that one right now. There's some stuff I still gotta do yet with the brake lines and just kinda some work that I'm not really excited to do, so I'm gonna do that first. I have one power steering line to replace down there, one of the hard lines for the steering rack. When I was making the engine mounts, I actually hit it with the grinder and nicked it, so I'm replacing one of the hard lines. I'm gonna redo the brake line in the rear going from side to side, and then I moved the brake line that was in the drive shaft tunnel out to the outside. And I also wanna kinda repaint the K-member. When I did throw the paint on there, I didn't have a full can, so I missed a couple spots. I'm gonna go through and repaint some of this stuff. Do those brake lines, do the power steering line, and I guess just <laughs> knock all that stuff out because I don't really want to do that stuff. That stuff's never fun to do. So I'll get it out of the way before I do the wiring. And essentially what I'd like to do by the end of this weekend or this video is get the thing ready to where it's just ready to wire the car. I'm also going to be pulling the engine and transmission back out to do that stuff. There's something I want to rework on the back side of the transmission mount. So for some reason these bolts here, when they're even when they're fully tight, it doesn't really lock down the transmission, so I don't know if I'll even be able to show this, but... Uh, see, I just was able to move the transmission back and forth. I can move it by hand even though these are fully tight. So I think the spacer in here that came with this mount is, is too big. It doesn't allow the these bushings to be compressed enough to stop the transmission from actually shaking back and forth. And I kind of noticed that on accident actually, because it's pretty tough to move, but I did notice it on accident because when I had the transmission out, I had the cross member still bolted on and then I bumped the cross member and the whole thing twisted. So that's how I realized that this thing was still actually loose or not completely tight. So <clears throat> I uh, want to address that too. I might just have to shorten the spacers that are in there because there's a like a sleeve spacer that goes around the bolt. But then after I address all that stuff, we should be able to get to the wiring. And that part I'm actually kind of looking forward to. I also did finish up all of the plumbing for the fuel system. So these lines just come up here. I have the return line and then the two feed lines. And then the differential is here. So you can see I have probably four or five inches of clearance now where the diff isn't rubbing on the fuel lines, so that's always a plus. There's my brake line bracket. I gotta add the line going from the front, and then the line going to the crossover to the other side, over to this guy here. So that's kind of the mission for the weekend. All right, I guess what I wanted to show here is this uh, transmission cross member. So I'll put this wrench on it, Allen wrench on the bottom. And I'll pull on it, twist it as hard as I can. It's pretty tight. But watch this. Just a light tap with the dead ball, and the thing is completely loose. So I physically can't tighten those bolts anymore, but this thing is just really loose in here, so it's able to slide around. So what I think I want to do is take these spacers out of here and make those spacers a little bit shorter so I can actually get this thing fully tight. So yeah, that's how tight they were. I had to hit it with the dead bolt to get the bolt out. They have this little spacer in it there. So I'm gonna take some material off the spacer, make it a little bit shorter so I can actually compress this bushing and uh, get that to hold in there tight. All right, so these things are about 950. They do have a little beveled edge on each end. So what I think I'll do is just like take that little beveled edge off and that should get it down to about 880. So I'll take like 60 or 70 thou off each one and that should hopefully be enough to get them tight. All right, so I put both those on the lathe and uh, the mini lathe, and I took 70 thousandths off each one. So each one is at 880 now, and I tightened them up. Well, they don't move around at all, even hitting them with the dead blow. So 
Well, before I showed you I could move it by hand underneath the car, I could grab the tail shaft to the transmission. Even with the front bolted in, I could move the tail shaft around side to side by hand with them fully tight. So now even whacking them with the dead blow, I can't get them to move. So, I mean, I'm sure if I hit them with the sludge, it would, it would uh, move them, but even a pretty good whack, it doesn't, doesn't move around. So that's good. I did just put a 10A cap on there because that's where they had the oil drain going before. Next thing I'm working on is replacing this rear brake line. So this one right here was kind of starting to rub through. So I did throw a new line on there. I don't honestly even know how that was able to hit the axle and rub like in the middle of that, but it was rubbed. So throwing a new one on. So now I'm going to make a new line going from here over to here. And I actually picked up some overtime today, so I don't have a whole lot of time. So I'm going to go to work in about a half hour. So I'm going to try to get this line knocked out before I leave. Just using some of this copper nickel line, so this will be pretty easy to bend up. So I'll get going on that. All right, so there it is. Brake line's all done. Took probably like 20 minutes to do it all with bending and flaring both sides. The other line, I kind of nicked it again when I was trying to clean this stuff up to do the welding right here. So, and again, this spot and this spot. So I just hit it on that little spot right there, and I didn't want to give it back to him like that. So I made a new line for it. And I'm just eating the cost for that one because that was my mistake. And then the power steering line, that was my mistake. So that's not coming out of his budget. That's coming out of my budget. I guess I'm fixing that because it was my issue, my mistake. But I didn't want to give him back a compromised brake line. And then the other line is just the one that goes from here down to here. So I did get like a stainless kit for that. But I'm going to head to work and pick back up probably tomorrow. All right, so I got a little bit more done. Excuse my voice. I kind of like lost my voice today. Did get the new stainless line kit on there, so all the lines are good now. That steering rack line kit was only like 40 bucks, so that's not too bad. I did add a couple more ties to get the fuel lines together and got the passenger side wheel off so I could do the brake line. So I did do the brake line from the front to the rear also. So there it connects to the factory line, goes through the factory clamp holder there, comes back down, bends around under here. Just use a little clamp with a rivet and then back up and under. So now I went up and over this way to the pinch weld and back down through three more clamps. Got a clamp there, 90, to another clamp. Then it comes back, bends this way, kind of follows the fuel lines. Then comes back up into the uh, brake line Y there. So overall, I think the brake lines turned out pretty decent. And again, the reason for that was this line here was where the old brake line was and that's right inside the drive shaft tunnel so if you have a drive shaft failure don't want to lose a brake line at the same time so probably just a good idea to get it out out of the way and uh, out to the outside of the vehicle there so I think I'm gonna keep this wheel off for now because I am gonna have to do some stuff with this wiring up in here and I'll, I'd like to do all that when I do the actual wiring for the car and the Terminator I did finish uh, kind of painting the bottom side of everything and again, trying not to just like snowball this into completely painting the whole car because there is some like rust spots and stuff all over. I did patch up a little bit here and here because because there was rust exposed there. Went ahead and cut off the old uh, motor plate mounts. So you can see where, there, where that plate was there. So I just cut the flange off where the motor plate was. So now I can go ahead and start getting the engine and everything back in. Should be for the final time now. Once that's situated, I'll measure for the drive shaft and get that ordered. So I'm not waiting on the drive shaft. Then I can start working on the wiring. I think while the transmission is out and I have a Turbo 400 here, I'm going to I'm going to measure and mock up another one of these transmission holders that'll fit the Turbo 400. So the bigger size should be good for a 4L80 and Turbo 400. This 4L80 one, because of the difference in the case, only fits the 4L80. So. I figure while I have one here, I can use this as a template and at least get another one made and mocked up. Going to be starting on the wiring for the car, so I did go ahead and order some of these Deutsch connectors. Got some 2-pin, 3-pin, and 4-pin connectors. So I will be using these where I can. I really wanted to use these on mainly the wires for the fuel pumps because I would like to be able to disconnect it with the Deutsch connector if you drop the tank or if he has to drop the tank for any reason. So that should be cool along with that. Went ahead and picked up this crimping set for the Deutsch connectors 20 gauge all the way to 12 gauge so so this one here is the 12 gauge size this one here is for 14 16 18 and this one is for 20 and 22 and you got some removal tools and stuff so that'll be cool start putting some nice connectors on stuff I did use one on the Ranger here 
just a little four pin. This one was actually pre-wired, and I think Matt Happel actually sent me that one in a box one day. So I do like the connectors, so I'd like to start using those a little bit more on stuff. So I should be getting into wiring pretty soon. I'm actually looking forward to the wiring part. I know that probably sounds crazy, but I kind of enjoy the wiring part. Other than that, I think I'm going to end it here. Uh, let my voice chill out a little bit so I don't sound like Miley Cyrus in the next video. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.